Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. The four inches rains came and I, I'll let you guys decide what, what happens. What, what's, what do you think of the crop afterwards? Um, but the two inches fell Saturday night into Sunday morning, which is great. We could have, that was the first real rain we had for the month of June. Um, awesome, the ground took that very well. And then uh, we had a few scattered tents throughout Sunday. And then Sunday evening, four-ish, somewhere around four-ish, uh, between four and five, um, we got two inches of rain in a half hour. Um, it, it was, <laughs> it bored. It was a cow peeing on a flat rock kind of rain. It was just insane, insane uh, how much it rained. But, so today's Wednesday. I spent the week watching everybody else's videos on how their fields are damaged. So we'll look at my damage um, so I can I can join them and um, let you guys tell me what you think. Well, here's the, here's the low ground. Um, you can see all the horrible mud that I have to tretch through. Uh, hopefully the corn will make it okay with all the all the non flooding it uh going up the hill i'll try and get some video if i can today up the hill otherwise next time i'm up there i will get it i stripped it you can see this has been strip tilled right on up that hill there isn't a single washout on that hill where there's not even a crop growing you guys tell me remember Remember, we had some talk, but I just want to show you this, then I'll turn around and I'll lecture you. Um, but, so that strip till up the hill is like here. You can already see all the wormholes. So that, that ground is soft. I just pushed in four inches, um, and that's the whole point. Look at how granular that is. That is, it's becoming, it's becoming healthier soil it's it's slowly getting there we got we got a long ways to go guys this has only been four inches or four years on a lot of this ground but all my moisture is down here at the bottom there's worms gosh this is just freaking amazing soil down here i can't believe in four years what a transformation that has made um and and then we're covered and you can see where it's exposed, it's dry, the wind is hitting it, the sun is hitting it, but where it's covered, it's doing what it's supposed to do. All the water, same thing there, where the plant corn is planted on that strip till berm, all that water went right down. It got away from the top roots for flooding, went right to the bottom of that trench, and then it just saturates and soaks up. That's why that hill isn't washed out. All the water went into the hill. It didn't come down the hill. It's it's amazing. So on the soil health thing, remember how I was saying earlier this spring that uh, these longtime soil health guys are talking about how they can take a rain event of 8, 10, 12 inches an hour. And you think, oh man, what kind of line are you feeding me? I've only been doing it for four years and on a four inch rain event, basically in less than 24 hours, with almost, with almost within 12 hours from start to finish, we had four inches of rain. And, and that was on a Sunday evening. And by Tuesday, I was spraying and side dressing corn. Um, how much is that worth? Let's just put it this way. How much is that worth to, to you guys? If, if that field needed spring, you know, we got ragweed, we got water hemp, we got Palmer amaranth. Um, it's here today, it's here tomorrow, it's, you know, a foot tall, um, the third day. So I was able to spray it on time, even though we had that rain event. What's that worth? That's, that's worth that. Hopefully the chemical worked and kills them little guys. Um, that's the problem with them weeds is it's not guaranteed, but at least I was able to get out there on time and make an attempt, not get out there when there's three foot tall weeds because I had to wait for the ground to dry up. I didn't have to hire somebody to come in. What is it worth on the corn? 
I'm side dressing when the corn, when it's time for side dressing. I'm not waiting for the ground to heal so I can go out with a broadcaster because by then the corn's gonna be too tall, the little pull type broadcasters won't work. So either way, you're gonna be hiring the co-op with the, with the high boy to come out. Now I met three local guys this week, um, local, and, uh, or not this week, this spring, um, I don't mind. You know, I have fun with the neighbors when they pick on me a little bit. I, I enjoy that. It's fun. We, we all get a good chuckle. But, but when uh, three local people just come up and are just a-holes and jerks about it, um, you know, I'm wrong. Everything I'm experiencing is wrong. Everything I'm doing is wrong. Um, I should listen to them because they know and it's better um, to, you know, to be one of them no-till kind of guys. Um, just just flat out rude jerks about it that it don't work here blah 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 you know i i, I want to thank them for lighting a little fire back in me this this summer um because to them to them guys i say i'm fertilizing my corn you're going to be paying the co-op because you can't get out to your field and 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 i'm the dumb one huh yeah makes a lot of sense you idiots we'll, we'll look at the sand hill but, but what's it worth that on the four inch rain event, my water is in my field, very little ran off. As, as little as I can possibly control ran off. How about that? Um, was there some runoff? Sure. Um, but compared to where we were four years ago, up to four years ago, we're a polar opposite. We're a hundred percent improved. We got a long ways to go, but we're, we're getting there and the results are saying keep going down this path because it's working i watched all these videos around the state of minnesota and on forums and everything else everybody's pictures and stuff and then it makes me ask a couple questions of one why are you investing in tiling um the one guy had tiling that was broken it's bubbling up and and he had to put on his little gloves so he could shovel for 10 minutes to the field so the water could get to the ditch <laughs> you're a grown man you don't need gloves to shovel but all these guys are showing these pictures of these flooded fields and most of them show pictures of their yards or video of their yards instead of spending a million dollars on a shop or hundreds of thousands of dollars on a fancy shop when you can't even fix your own equipment why don't you worry about your soil health so when you do get these eight, 10, 12 inches for a month, a month, your soil can take it. And now I understand, oh, you don't live here, you don't know, you just one of these guys. Guys, there, there is somebody in your county that is doing these practices and uh, I, I love talking to them because we have the same conversation all the time. When are people gonna wake up? We are responsible for the water that's on our field and how that water runs off our field. Um, anybody heard of a buffer law in Minnesota? Anybody hear of the nitrogen regulations in Minnesota? How about the neonicticide regulations in Minnesota? What about all this drama and tie over tiling coming from the public out crying against the farmers and tiling? Um, yeah, yeah. Joe Public is, is making regulations for us um, and they're not good regulations for us. They're making it very difficult. So that, that, that's the other part of it too. Um, what about, what about the long-term goals? So the people that just come and say, well, you know, I tried no till one time and it just yielded sucked. Well, okay. At least you made an effort. Good way to, way to stick with it. Um, I, I yield is irrelevant. This is a long-term game. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, but in the long run, it is definitely winning. Um, yield, to just say yield, well, look at that. I, 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 and I hear it every year, every spring from, from five or six guys, every spring. Well, I, I know till the little bit of beans over there and they were four or five bushel less. Okay. What was your cash flow? What if you, after 10 years of, of doing soil health stuff between no-till, strip-till, maybe using a little vertical till to make the no-till work for you, 
Um, we don't have to belong to this church of zero till. We can make no till work with a little bit of vertical tillage if we need to. And yeah, we can use a little bit of tiling here and there on, on problematic areas, but the grid pattern a whole field, to me, that just shows how that whole field is unhealthy. That doesn't, grid pattern tiling a field, to me, has to be about the most ridiculous thing there is. Uh, one, if you have to grid pattern tile it so you can grow a corn or bean crop because that's what you want to grow in in markets like this, that, that just is asinine to me. I would, I would look for alternative crops in that field before I'd grid pattern tile it. I would do something other. The grid pattern tile, to me, has to be just the, the most bonkers thing. I, I can't fathom why you would spend thousands of dollars per acre to get rid of water when for free, for free, you could improve your soil health that could take all that water. And, and you know, um, but I hear it, everybody says, oh, you don't know, you don't work here, blah, blah, blah. All right, that's fine. We'll stick to me, me versus me. In the last four years, it is insane how we came. But let's say after 10 years, I increase organic matter 1%. 1%. takes 10 years of cover cropping and no-till to get there, but I do it. That 1% organic matter is going to hold 4% more water and give me roughly 20 pounds of nitrogen. How much better would my cash flow be if I didn't have to buy 20 end credits from the co-op to grow the same crop? Or how much better crop could I grow holding 4% more water and getting an additional free 20 end credits? I'll let you guys answer that one. Um, let's, uh, let's run around and look at the different spots in the field and how they, uh, how they suffered through this rain event. Here we go, guys. We're up at the hill down there is where I was standing when I was telling you about the hill up here. Um, yeah, yeah, so this is what the hilltop looks like. You tell me, out of this dry dirt, you tell me, how on earth did that sand, that large granule sand, not wash down that freaking hill other than there's soil structure here? It let the rain in. Same thing up here. Right here's a strip till berm. Boop! Right down in. You can feel, boy, we're, we're, I don't know if we're close to 80 degrees today. Maybe 70, 75 degrees. But you can feel the heat on that sand. But I can just paw in. Look at the moisture. It's all right there. Look at that dirt. There's residue buried in the dirt. That helps our water get in. That helps that dirt stay in. That's almost like wire mesh and concrete, guys. That's how we stop compaction in our no-till, but there's a lot of moisture there. If I can paw down in, in 10 seconds, I can make a badger hole. How deep do you think these roots are going? These roots are not stopping. They are just plunging down, plunging down. You can see that there were some spots where it tried to run, but the surface residue stopped it. Um, I am a million percent impressed that these strip till tracks didn't just blow right out. Uh, this field by nature, the water comes down the hill and uh, right here down the bottom, 20 some feet in front of me, or not too far from where I'm standing, is the water will come out the hillside and you can kind of see on the corn, a little bit of this to the corn. This is the zone where that water normally comes out that hillside. And there's some pockets, they're hard to see over here, but you can kind of see some swaling right in here. That's where that water comes out. When we used to mow bore plow this field, it was kind of fun because that dead furrow coming up the field, you'd see dry, 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 and then boom, there'd literally be water percolating out of the hill and running down the dead furrow when we used to mow board it. But yeah, yeah, again, I, I will leave you guys to make your own decisions on how that granular soil stayed in place two inches and a half hour other than soil structure soil health trying to start our path down soil health and stuff like that um it is it is getting amazing up here um you know you see a little variance now to the corn but at least it's green it wasn't too many years ago that when we were doing full tillage and broadcast fertility up here on our soils, I know there's a couple other guys that are like, you're nuts with broadcast fertility, that you're wasting, or you're 
with with the the banding fertility you're wasting time you're being silly um you know when we did full tillage and broadcast fertility up here you you would have 120 140 bushel corn coming up the hill and then you'd get here and you'd have 70 bushel 60 bushel 50 bushel 40 bushel it just kept dropping and uh you could you could see it from an airplane a mile in the sky and then you got over the ridge and as you went down the ridge, pretty soon that yield started coming back up. And uh, so, yeah, we are, the proof is in the pudding, guys. The proof is in the pudding. Uh, on a quick side note, what a gorgeous rig that is. I am, I am just having a ball spoon feeding and, and side dressing the corn. Um, this, is, this is too fun. I, 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 I can't believe I'm farming for my living at least for this year <laughs> we'll see what happens this fall that determines if i get to do it again next year but for this year i get to live my dream um over the ridge i will show you some water i drove through and let's not mistake compaction for soil structure guys i know in parts of the dakotas uh western minnesota southern minnesota there are parts that you can drive through standing water not because they have great soil structure, because there's compaction. Maybe some of them do have good soil structure. Um, I dug a lot of hole, holes up in North Dakota when I was driving piling. Um, this soil, if I tilled this ground, you couldn't, well, as soon as this ground got damp, you would have that tractor buried to the drawbar. That front rock box would be sitting on the ground before I got to the water. It's not because there's compaction. If there was compaction, would a guy be able to just suck that sucker down there? It just sucks, sucks it in there. That that's that's not compaction, guys. That's water that got infiltrated. I can just keep. You just got to get through them. The muck is. The muck is biting it. It's not that it's compacted. It just... Don't mistake compaction for soil structure. Um, yeah, I can't believe myself versus myself. And that's why I say me versus me, because I can't ever say, well, look at that guy's field, because that guy's field might be different. All I'm saying is... Four years ago when I started this crazy train, ain't no way in heck you would have got through there. Normally I don't even plant there. Um, <laughs> just uh, this spring was dry enough. I'm just like, what the heck? If I can plant through it, then I'll be forced to, to spray it and keep it clean. It's, a, it's plugged up. It's the old draw that used to run across here and it's plugged up. It got overgrown with grass. It's supposed to get in that grass, run along that tree line into the county ditch right over that last little tree i'll get it opened up but um yeah yeah for the way you know you got almost a twenty thousand. when i ran him across the scale uh there was almost five thousand pounds on that front axle and uh there you go guys i am having a ball i am just having a ball after a four inch rain event and i'm out here doing field work two days later um and i'm not making ruts i'm driving through standing water yep there was a couple spots down by the road, of course, where everybody's gonna see it and say, whoop, see, look at that knucklehead. But uh, yep, down by the road, there was a spot that's notoriously bad. I've sank the tractors there so many times <laughs> in my life. It's not even funny. Um, and, and yep, I drove right through it. It got a little squirrely, a little soft. I sunk in, you know, six inches or whatever. But one-tenth of an acre out of an 85 almost 90 acre field and uh that after four inches of rain and that's all the trouble i have we've come a long ways my friends